Bengali Cuisine, Wikipedia Article Audio Genres Institutions The Partition of Bengal The Influence of the Widows Awards Genres Institutions Awards Bengali cuisine is a culinary style originating in Bengal, a region in the eastern part of the Indian subcontinent, which is now divided between Bangladesh and the West Bengal state of India. Other regions, such as Tripura, and the Barak Valley region of Assam also have large native Bengali populations and share this cuisine. With an emphasis on fish, vegetables, and lentils are served with rice as a staple diet. Characteristics of Bengali Cuisine Bengali cuisine is known for its subtle flavors, and its spread of confectionaries and desserts. It also has the only traditionally developed multi-course tradition from the subcontinent that is analogous in structure to the modern service A La Russe style of French cuisine with food served course-wise rather than all at once. The partition of Bengal following independence from the British in 1947 separated West Bengal from Bangladesh. This caused a significant change in demographics, populations were divided along religious lines, and over three million people were said to have crossed the new Bengal border in either direction. This large-scale displacement along religious lines led to some changes of food, because there were some minor differences in food habits between the Muslims and the Hindus. However, large populations of each religion remained on either side of the border. Though similar, there is a distinct difference between the flavors of the cuisines of West Bengal and Bangladesh. Apart from this, Every district of both parts of Bengal have subtle variations in the use of raw materials and flavors. Fish The treatment of Hindu widows has always been highly repressive. Tradition ties a woman's identity to her husband, a widow is therefore left with no identity, property rights, or social standing. Bengal was particularly repressive in this regard. Widows were either banished or led highly monastic lives within the household, living under rigid dietary restrictions and not allowed any interests but religion and housework. The 19th century saw active widow reform movements in Bengala Euro the ban on Sati in 1829 and the Hindu Widow Remarriage Act of 1856 were key milestones a Euro but the related social practices took a long while to die out and still remain in part. Rampant child marriage and low life expectancies left many women widowed a euro it is estimated that 25% of households have a widow living in them. Widows were not allowed to leave the house, so their contribution to the household was usually restricted to the kitchen a euro creating a unique class of chefs in the dominant Hindu community. While most Bengali castes ate meat and fish, this was barred for widows. Widows also did not use heating foods such as shallot and garlic, but ginger was allowed a euro this found a core place in Bengali curries, both vegetarian and non-vegetarian. Expensive spices such as saffron, cinnamon or cloves were used very sparingly if at all, nuts, dry fruits, milk and milk products were similarly scarce. In spite of all these restrictions, however, the food evolved in such a way that its deceptively simple preparations drew upon Bengal's vast larder of vegetable options and were often elaborate to the point of fussiness. Cooked with elaborate precision and served with equal refinement a euro multiple courses and an intricate formality about what goes with what and in which sequence a euro it formed an enduring base for a rich and varied cuisine. Leftover cuts in particular such as spinach ends or vegetable peel, are transformed. 
Chitrita Banerjee in her book quotes a 19th century Bengali writer mentioning that it was impossible to taste the full glory of vegetarian cooking unless your own wife became a widow. The traditional society of Bengal has always been heavily agrarian, hunting, except by some local clansmen, was uncommon. Rice is the staple, with many regions growing speciality rice varieties. Domestic cattle are common, more for agriculture than large-scale dairy farming. Milk is an important source of nutrition, and also a key ingredient in Bengal's desserts. Ordinary food served at home is different from that served during social functions and festivals, and again very different from what might be served at a larger gathering. Meat Nearly every Bengali community eat meat or fish. In most parts of the Indian subcontinent, individual castes and communities have their own food habits, this is not true of Bengal. There is similarity in eating styles across social strata, with the Hindu upper caste Brahmins sharing a diet very similar to the trading or princely castes. Fish, goat, mutton, and chicken are commonly eaten across social strata. Beef and pork also are available throughout the state. Special Dishes of Dhaka The nature and variety of dishes found in Bengali cooking are unique even in India. Fresh sweet water fish is one of its most distinctive features. Bengal's rivers, ponds, and lakes contain varieties of fish such as roerai, eilish, koi or pabda. Prawns, shrimp, and crabs also abound. Almost every village in Bengal has ponds used for pisciculture, and at least one meal a day is certain to have a fish course. Specialties of Kolkata and Suburbs Bengalis also excel in the cooking of regional vegetables. They prepare a variety of the dishes using the many types of vegetables that grow there year-round. They can make ambrosial dishes out of the oftentimes rejected peels, stalks, and leaves of vegetables. This style of cooking food using rejected parts of the vegetables, is predominant in Bengalis in Bangladesh and those who have migrated to West Bengal and they use fuel-efficient methods, such as steaming fish or vegetables in a small covered bowl nestled at the top of the rice pot. The use of spices for both fish and vegetable dishes is quite extensive and includes many combinations not found in other parts of India. Examples are the onion-flavored kalanji, radhuni, and five-spice or panchfaran. Bengali cooking includes the faran of a combination of whole spices, fried and added at the start or finish of cooking as a flavoring special to each dish. Bengalis share their use of whole black mustard seeds with South Indians, but unique to Bengal is the extensive use of freshly ground mustard paste. A pungent mustard paste called kashundi is a dipping sauce popular in Bengal. Vegetables. Piper chiba is a flowering vine in the family Piperaceae. Chuihul is originally the twig of a piper chiba. It is a very expensive spice in Bangladesh, and tastes like horseradish. People in Kolna, Bagarhat, and Shatkaira cut down the stem, roots, peel the skin, and cut it into small pieces and cook them with meat and fishes, especially with mutton. Fish is the dominant kind of protein in Bengali cuisine and is cultivated in ponds and fished with nets in the freshwater rivers of the Ganges Delta. Almost every part of the fish is eaten, unlike other regions, the head is particularly preferred. Other spare bits of the fish are usually used to flavor curries and dals. More than 40 types of mostly freshwater fish are common including carp varieties like rui, koi, tilapia, betki, katla, the wriggling catfish familia euro tangra, magur, sole, shinji euro pabda, katla, eilish, 
palm flay, as well as shu a pound ki. Chingri is particularly popular and comes in variety sa euro kuko, bagda, or galda. The saltwater fish Eilish is very popular among Bengalis. Eilish mock, which migrates upstream to breed is a delicacy, the varied salt content at different stages of the journey is of particular interest to the connoisseur, as is the river from which the fish comes a euro fish from the river Pada in Bangladesh, for example, is traditionally considered the best. There are numerous ways of cooking fish, depending on the texture, size, fat content, and the bones. It could be fried, cooked and roasted, a simple spicy tomato or ginger-based gravy, or mustard-based with green chilies, with posto, with seasonal vegetables, steamed, steamed inside of plantain or butternut squash leaves, cooked with doy, with sour sauce with sweet sauce or the fish can be made to taste sweet on one side, and savory on the other. Eilish is said be cooked in 108 distinct ways. Eilish which is considered the tastiest among the Bengal culinary delights is becoming costlier by the day. With the partial drying of Gunga River the volume of Catch River is getting lower driving up the prices. The Eilish breeds in fresh water and during the rainy season it travels up the Ganges to breed where it is caught and this fresh water fish is the best in terms of taste. The fish from Padma River is also highly prized for its sweet taste. Cereals The most preferred form of meat in Bengal is mutton or goat meat. Kashi or Kachi Panthi are the common forms of goat meat taken. Some delicate dishes are cooked with Rewaji Kashi, a goat that has been specifically raised on a singular kind of diet, to encourage the growth of intramuscular fat, commonly known as parda. However in Bangladesh beef is the most popular meat while in West Bengal it is not commonly eaten due religious prohibition for Hindus. Pork unlike Bangladesh is commonly eaten in West Bengal especially amongst the Santal tribes, the people in the Darjeeling district, and is quite popular in urban regions of West Bengal. Pork is available on the menus of almost all Chinese restaurants in Kolkata. Chicken is also preferred, though it has grown steadily in popularity over the last few decades after the advent of poultry farming. Beef though not as popular as in West Bengal, is still widely consumed in Bangladesh due to being a Muslim majority. Eggs a euro both chicken and duck a euro are quite popular. Duck meat is quite often found on menus in West Bengal, mostly Chinese restaurants, even though the birds are common in the many ponds and lakes. Turkey meat, emu meat, quail meat, and rabbit meat are also available to buy raw and the delicacies of these meats are popular in the food joints. Cooking medium with spices The Nawabs of Dhaka were not the original Nawabs of Bengal. Their ancestors came from Kashmir as merchants who made their fortunes in eastern Bengal in the 17th century. They finally settled in Dhaka, and Having bought large landed estates, they became the largest landowners in these parts. They were given the title of Nawab by the British. Poetry, novels, science fiction, folk literature, Tarja The Nawabs brought many famous Babarkais from many parts of India who introduced many new dishes, especially meat dishes, to the local cuisine. Admittedly, these expensive dishes were hardly enjoyed by the common people. They remained the favorite of the wealthy and the well-to-do aristocrats. After 1947 some of them have become favorites of the rich classes especially on such festive occasions as Eid and marriages. The food industry of Bangladesh is boosting since the 1950s with different kinds of Dhaka-style biryanis, palau, Tehari, cutlet, kebabs, 
Lassi, Matha, Falada and other Bangladesh special food items. Bangladesh cuisine and food industry is booming since the independence of Bangladesh in 1971. Kebabs, there are many kinds of kebabs, mostly cooked over open grill. Some of the Dhaka's specialty of this genre are, Sutli kebab, Bihari kebab, Bodhi kebab, etc., made from marinade mutton and beef. Kebabs are eaten as snacks or as starters for a big feast. Special kinds of breads, there are many kinds of breads made with cheese mix, with minced meat, with special spices, etc., all are delicacies enjoyed by the affluent classes as side dishes. Literary Institutions, Bangiya Sahitya Parishad, Paskambanga Bangla Academy, Bangla Academy. Mutton Biryani, this famous dish is now the mainstay speciality of the Bengali cuisine, especially in Kolkata. It is cooked with basmati rice and paki goat mutton pieces. When on dum, i.e., steamed in a sealed pot over a slow wood fire or charcoal to impart a smoky flavor, simultaneously cooking both rice and mutton. Spices such as saffron, nutmeg, and star anise are employed chefs of this special dish. Instruments and Utensils Preparation and Cutting Cooking Styles Common Bengali Recipe Styles Whole Goat Roasted, Marinated Whole Cabrito is Roasted Over Charcoal Fire this dish is usually made on special occasions such as marriage feast when usually it is served on the high table reserved for the bridegroom and his party. Literary Awards, Rabindra Puraskar, Bangla Academy Literary Award, Ananda Puraskar. Whole roasted chicken slash duck, highly spiced, cooked in a pot with lots of ghee. Special dishes meant for festive occasion, there are some delicacies that are enjoyed occasionally by the wealthy people. These are, game birds, turtle, rabbit, or venison cooked in spicy sauce. However, the rare birds and turtles and deer being protected by law, this is on the decline. However, pigeons, guinea fowls, muscovy ducks, etc., are still eaten as hobby food by some peoples. Turtles are still sold at many places although this is illegal. There are gourds, roots and tubers, leafy greens, succulent stalks, lemons and limes, green and purple aubergine, shallots, plantain, broad beans, okra, banana tree stems and flowers, green jackfruit and red pumpkins in the vegetable markets or shabji bajar. Bitter vegetables like bitter melon slash gourd and nim leaves are used. Bengalis are particularly fond of using leftover bits of vegetables. Peels, roots, stems and other bits that are usually disposed of are eaten in Bengal. Bengal Studies, Poetry Novels, Science Fiction Bengali people are primarily rice eaters, and the rainfall and soil in Bengal lends itself to rice production as well. Many varieties of rice are produced from the long grain fragrant varieties to small grain thick ones. Rice is semi-prepared in some cases when it is sold as parboiled, or in some cases as unpolished as well still retaining the color of the husk. Rice is eaten in various forms as well a euro puffed, beaten, boiled and fried depending on the meal. The first two are used usually as snacks and the other as the main constituent in a meal. Lightly fermented rice is also used as breakfast in rural and agrarian communities. Luchi or porodha are also used as the primary food item on the table. It is considered that wheat-based food came in from the north and is relatively new in Advent. 
Both Luchi and Paratha could have stuffed versions as well, and the stuffing could vary from dal, peas, etc. Pulses form another important ingredient of a meal. These dals vary from mushur al, mug al, kothir dal, arhar dal, etc., and are used as an accompaniment to rice. Culinary Influences Shor Sher Tel is the primary cooking medium in Bengali cuisine although Badam Tel is also used, because of its high smoke point. Of late, the use of sunflower oil, soybean oil, and refined vegetable oil, which is a mixture of soybean, cardi, and other edible vegetable oils, is gaining prominence. This later group is popularly known as Shada Tel meaning white oil, bringing out the contrast in color between the lightly colored groundnut and the somewhat darker mustard oil and the other white oils. However, depending on type of food, ghee is often used, e.g., for making the dough or for frying bread. Mustard paste, halad, pashto, ada, don, and narical are other common ingredients. The panchfaran is a general-purpose spice mixture composed of radhuni, jira, kalo jira, mithai, and mori. This mixture is more convenient for vegetarian dishes and fish preparations. Panchfaran is also referred to as Bengali five spice mixture. Another characteristic of Bengali food is the use of a cutting instrument, the boti. South Indians also use the same sort of cutting instrument, where it is called katipita. It is a long curved blade on a platform held down by foot, both hands are used to hold whatever is being cut and move it against the blade. The method gives effective control over the cutting process, and can be used to cut anything from tiny shrimp to large pumpkins. Knives are rare in a traditional Bengali kitchen. Mughal Influence Anglo-Indian or Raj Influence Chinese Influence A kore is a universal cooking vessel for most Bengali food, for making sauces, frying slash stir-frying, etc. The duchy is used generally for larger amounts of cooking or for making rice. The duchy comes with a thin flat lid which is used also to strain out the starch while finishing up cooking rice. The other prominent cooking utensil is a handi, which is a round-bottomed pot-like vessel. The three mentioned vessels all come in various sizes and in various metals and alloys. The tawa is used to make roti and porota. Silverware is not a part of traditional Bengali cookery. A flat metal spatula, kunti, is used often, along with hata, yahanjari, the shanrishi, the guntni for pura copywriting dal, the old wooden balloon chaki, and the shil nora, which is a rough form of a mortar and pestle or grinding stone. The kuruni is a unit asker, there to grate coconuts. Bengali cuisine is rather particular in the way vegetables and meat are prepared before cooking. Some vegetables are used unpeeled, in some preparations fish is used unskinned in contrast as well. However, in most dishes vegetables are peeled, and fish scaled and skinned. In many cases, the main ingredients are lightly marinated with salt and turmeric. Vegetables are to be cut in different ways for different preparations. Dicing, julienne, strips, scoops, slices, shreds are common and one type of cut vegetables cannot replace another style of cutting for a particular preparation. Any aberration is frowned upon. For example, in ALU Kummerch Hakka, the potatoes and gourds must be diced not shredded, if they are shredded it is called gantu and not chaka. Bengali cuisine has evolved with the influence of Mughal cuisine, 
Anglo-Indian cuisine, Chinese cuisine, and so on. Some characteristics stand out, great number of rivers and its tributaries providing fresh water fish, flat and fertile land producing abundance of paddy and pulse, domestic cattle and dairy farming providing milk, beef and mutton, alluvial soil producing variety of fruits and vegetables. Moreover, use of different spices has added to the flavor and taste of Bengali food. Ceremonial food differs from the daily food. While daily food consists mainly of rice slash roti, fish, lentil, meat, vegetables etc., in different occasions and festivals, guests are entertained with different kind of palau or biryani, chicken korma, beef kalia, kebab, borhani, firni, jorda, or different sweet dishes etc. A significant feature of the cuisine is a significant variety of sweets based on milk and sugar as part of tradition. Wheat is used alongside rice, in different types of breads, such as luchi, kochurai, and paroa pound a. Special cuisine are also prepared in different seasons, for example, in winter, both urban and rural areas prepare various kinds of pithi and payish slash kheer are prepared. Bengali Meals Prosperity and urbanization also led to the widespread use of professional cooks who introduced complex spice mixtures and more elaborate sauces, along with techniques, such as roasting or braising. Also introduced around this time, probably as a consequence of increased urbanization, was a new class of snack foods. These snack foods are most often consumed with evening tea. The tea time ritual was probably inspired by the British, but the snacks most popular are shingara, dal puri, samosa, payaji, biguni, fuluri, chop, puffed rice, halim etc. Chat patty is one of the most popular street foods of Bangladesh. The following are a list of characteristic Bengali recipe styles. There are Chinese, Southeast Asian, and Burmese influences in the food of Bengal, as well as some British influence, because of the formation of Kolkata during the 1700s. Each entry here is a class of recipes, producing different dishes depending on the choice of ingredients. There are six different tastes to which the Bengali palate caters to, sweet, sour, Salty, bitter, hot and kosher. Bengali food today has some broad traditional variations. Islam arrived in Bengal probably around the mid-13th century, coming into force with the penetration of the Muslim rulers from the northwest. Dhaka, in particular, expanded greatly under Mughal rule. The partition of India in 1947 resulted in a large migration of people to and from present-day Bangladesh, resulting in a much stronger divide along religious lines. Bangladesh today shows a much greater Muslim influence than West Bengal. The influence on the food was from the top down, and more gradual than in many other parts of India. This led to a unique cuisine where even commoners ate the dishes of the royal court, such as biryani, korma, and bana. The influence was reinforced in the Raj era, when Kolkata became the place of refuge for many prominent exiled Nawabs, especially the family of Tipu Sultan from Mysore and Wajid Ali Shah, the ousted Nawab of Awad. The exiles brought with them hundreds of cooks and masalkas, and as their royal patronage and wealth diminished, they became interspersed into the local population. These cooks came with the knowledge of a very wide range of spices and mace, the extensive use of ghee as a method of cooking, and special ways of marinating meats. In Bangladesh, this food has over time become the staple food of the populace. In West Bengal, however, 
this has remained, more than the other categories, the food of professional chefs, the best examples are still available at restaurants. Specialties include chap, rizela, and the famous kathy roll. The local population absorbed some of the ingredients and techniques into their daily food, resulting in meat-based varieties of many traditional vegetarian dishes, but the foods remained largely distinct. The Mughal influence is most distinct in preparations involving meat, especially mutton. However, even chicken and other meats became more prevalent. The influence was also seen in desserts. Traditional desserts were based on rice pastes and jaggery but under the Mughal influence moved towards significantly increased use of milk, cream and sugar along with expensive spices such as cardamom and saffron. Anglo-Indian food is not purely the result of the influence of the British. Bengal was once the home of a French colony, and also hosted populations of Portuguese, Dutch, and other Europeans. These collective Western influences are seen in the foods created to satisfy the tastes of the Western rulers. The result is a unique cuisine, local ingredients adapted to French and Italian cooking technique a Euro characterized by creamy sauces, the restrained use of spices, and new techniques such as baking. English and Jewish bakers such as Fleury's and Nahum's dominated the confectionery industry which migrated from British tables to everyday Bengali ones, resulting in unique creations such as the Pa'e Pound is. Another enduring contribution to Bengali cuisine is Parua Pound I, or Western-style bread. Rajara cuisine lives on especially in the variety of finger foods popularized in the Pukha clubs of Kolkata, such as mutton chop, kabirajai cutlet or fish orly. The British also influenced food in a somewhat different way. Many British families in India hired local cooks, and through them discovered local foods. The foods had to be toned down or modified to suit the tastes of the memsayabs. The most distinct influence is seen in the desserts, many of which were created specifically to satisfy the British a euro most notably the very popular sweet liikani named after the first vice reign Lady Canning, it is a derivative of the panchua created for an event hosted by her. The Chinese of Kolkata originally settled into a village called Akapur south of Kolkata in the late 18th century, later moving into the city and finally into its present home in Tangra at the eastern edge of Kolkata. The Chinese origin people of Kolkata form a substantial and successful community with a distinct identity. With this identity came Chinese food available at almost every street corner in Kolkata at present, due to the taste, quick cooking procedure, and no similarity with the original Chinese recipe other than the use of soy sauce. They were mostly Cantonese tradesmen and sailors who first settled down here and decided to cook with whatever items they had at hand. The Daily Meal First Course or Starter the influence of this unique syncretic cuisine cannot be overstated, it is available in every town in India and Bangladesh as Chinese food. Bengali immigrants to other countries have started carrying this abroad as well, Indian Chinese restaurants have appeared in many places in the United States and UK. Indian Chinese food was given a second boost when a large number of Tibetans migrated into Indian territory following the 14th Dalai Lama's flight. Tibetans brought with them their own delicacies to add to this genre, such as the very popular Momo or Thukpa. Tibetans and Nepali immigrants also found ready employment in kitchens and helped power the millions of eateries that serve this unique fusion on virtually every street in Kolkata. The chop suey became a favorite and versions like American chop suey and Chinese chop suey were constantly talked about. Shack 
The medium of cooking is mustard oil which adds on its own pungency. Another very important item of Bengali cuisine is the variety of sweets or mishti as they call them. Most of them are milk-based and are prepared from chana. The most popular among the Bengali sweets are the rashagala, shandish, panchua, and mishti doi and these four sweets are deemed essential at every wedding besides some other sweets, which may vary as per individual choice. A meal, for the Bengali, is a ritual in itself even only boiled rice and lentils, with a little fish. Bengalis, like the French, spend not only the great deal of time thinking about the food but also on its preparation and eating. Quips like Bengalis live to eat and Bengalis spend most of their income on food are not exactly exaggerated. The early morning shopping for fresh vegetables, fish etc. is the prerogative of the head of the family, even in affluent household because he feels that he alone can pick up the best at a bargain price. The Bengalis are very particular about the way and the order in which the food should be served. Each dish is to be eaten separately with a little rice so that the individual flavors can be enjoyed. The first item served may be a little ghee which is poured over a small portion of rice and eaten with a pinch of salt. Then come the bitter preparation, Shuto, followed by lentils or dals, together with roasted or fried vegetables. Next come the vegetable dishes, the lightly spiced vegetables, chunki, chaka, followed by the most heavily spiced dalna, gantu, and those cooked with fish. Finally the chicken or mutton, if this being served at all. Chaatni comes to clear the palate together with crisp savory wafers. Papa -er. Dessert is usually sweet yogurt. The meal is finally concluded with the handing out of betel leaf, which is considered to be an aid to digestion and an astringent. Traditionally the people here eat seated on the floor, where individual pieces of carpet, called asins, are spread for each person to sit on and the meal is served on a large gunmetal or silver plate and the various items of food are placed in bowls around the top of the thala, running from right to left. Rice is mounded and placed on the middle of the thala, with a little salt, chilies and lime placed on the upper right hand corner. They eat with the fingers of the right hand and strict etiquette is observed with regard to this. The typical Bengali fare includes a certain sequence of foot a euro somewhat like the courses of Western dining. Two sequences are commonly followed, one for ceremonial dinners such as a wedding and the day-to-day -day sequence. Both sequences have regional variations, and sometimes there are significant differences in a particular course between West Bengal and Bangladesh. Dal Main course Additional main course Chutney Desserts Mishti Shaendish Rasogala Ladu Rashmalai Panchua Chamsha M Pithi or Pith Other sweets at home, Bengalis traditionally ate without silverware, ka pound a, kamuk, and chhuri gradually finding use on Bengali tables in urban areas. Most Bengalis eat with their right hand, mashing small portions of meat and vegetable dishes with rice and in some cases, lentils. In rural areas, Bengalis traditionally eat sitting on the floor with a large banana or plantain leaf serving as the plate or plates made from sal leaves sewn together and dried. The elaborate dining habits of the Bengalis were a reflection of the attention the Bengali housewife paid to the kitchen. In modern times, thanks to Western influence, this is rarely followed anymore. Courses are frequently skipped or combined with everyday meals. 
Meals were usually served course by course to the diners by the youngest housewives, but increasing influence of nuclear families and urbanization has replaced this. It is now common to place everything on platters in the center of the table, and each diner serves him slash herself. Ceremonial occasions such as weddings used to have elaborate serving rituals, but professional catering and buffet-style dining is now commonplace. The traditions are far from dead, though, large family occasions and the more lavish ceremonial feasts still make sure that these rituals are observed. The foods of a daily meal are usually simpler, geared to balanced nutrition and makes extensive use of vegetables. The courses progress broadly from lighter to richer and heavier and goes through various tastes and taste cleansers. Rice remains common throughout the meal and is the main constituent of the meal, until the cha pound ni course. The starting course is made from bitter vegetables or herbs, often deep fried in oil or steamed with cubed potatoes. Portions are usually tinea euro a spoonful or so to be had with ricea euro and this course is considered to be both a palate cleanser and of great medicinal value. The ingredients used for this course change seasonally, but commonly used ones are carola or uch which are available nearly all year round, or tender neem leaves in spring. A thick soupy mixture of vegetables in a ginger mustard sauce called shuto in West Bengal usually follows the bitter starting course, but sometimes replaces it as a starter altogether. Eaten in much bigger portions, shuto is usually eaten in summer. It is a complex dish, featuring a fine balance of many different tastes and textures and is often a critical measure of a Bengali cook's abilities in the kitchen. The first course is then followed by shacks such as spinach, pay long chard, mithai fenugreek, or amaranth to name a few. The shack can be steamed or cooked in oil with other vegetables such as begun. Steamed shack is sometimes accompanied by a pungent paste of fermented mustard seeds, spices, and sometimes dried mangoes, dried Indian plum and olives which is called kashundi. Many varieties of the shack are savoured in Bengal. Mathai shack, Kormai shack, Pui shack, Ponka shack, Kalekara shack, Sajane shack, Hinch shack, Neem Pata, Lao shack, Kumro shack, Sorshi shack, Kocho shack etc. are some of the varieties that are very commonly eaten in Bengali dishes. Neem shack and begun is cooked in mustard oil and consumed with rice. This is a unique dish which is consumed as a normal food considering its bitter taste because of the neem leaves. The al course is usually the most substantial course, especially in West Bengal. It is eaten with a generous portion of rice and a number of accompaniments. Common accompaniments to al are alabate and beja. Beja literally means fried, most vegetables are good candidates but begun, kumro, or alu like french fries, or shredded and fried, uch, potol pointed gourd are common. Mock beja is also common, especially rui and eilish fishes. Beja is sometimes coated in a bichon and posto batter. A close cousin of beja is bara or deep-fried savory balls usually made from posh toe paste or coconut mince. Another variant is fried pointed gourd as potol or dorma with roe slash prawn. Another accompaniment is a vegetable preparation usually made of multiple vegetables stewed slowly together without any added water. Labra, chakori, gantu, or chan chra are all traditional cooking styles. There also are a host of other preparations that do not come under any of these categories and are simply called tarkari a euro the word merely means vegetable in Bengali. Sometimes these preparations may have spare pieces of fish such as bits of the head or gills, or spare portions of meat.
A charshari is a vegetable dish that is cooked without stirring, just to the point of charring. Pickles such as raw mangoes pickled in mustard oil and spices or sweet and tangy tamarind pickles and lemon pickle are also served with the dal course. A variety of pickles are a permanent fixture of Bengali meal. The next course is the fish course. Generally there is one fish course a day, because Bengalis tend to eat fish and generally derive the necessary protein intake from fish and dal. Meat was generally a once-a-week affair until the 1990s, but now with changing culture, meat is served more often in the household. Generally the most common fish dish is the yahal, where a thin use of fish is made with ginger, turmeric, chili, and cumin, and fish and sometimes potato or other vegetable. Bengali's fame in cooking fish both dried fish called shutki as well as fresh fish. Prawn or shrimp is often considered to be a kind of fish, and crabs are also a favorite of the Bengalis. Apart from it, mutton and chicken feature largely in the non-vegetarian menu, while the vegetarian menu contains homemade poneer, gram-floured hookah. Generally one or two pieces of fish or meat are served during lunch, with rice, to balance out the meal. Then comes the meat course. This course may be eaten occasionally for two reasons, the Hindu principle of ahimsa, which is observed throughout the region, and cost, as meat is very costly. The divide among the Bengalis of Bangladesh and West Bengal is most evident when it comes to the meat course. Meat is readily consumed in urban parts of Bangladesh and some consider it the meal's main course. Beef is mainly consumed in some of the feasts and banquets in major cities like Dhaka and Chittagong. Because the consumption of beef is prohibited among Bengali Hindu communities, Kashi mutton is traditionally the meat of choice in West Bengal, but merji chicken and aim eggs are also commonly consumed. At the time of partition, it was rare for caste Hindus to eat chicken or even eggs from hens, choosing rather duck eggs if eggs were to be consumed. Although it is debatable as to whether chicken is more popular than kashi in West Bengal today, the proliferation of poultry farms and hatcheries makes chicken the cheaper alternative. Next comes the chutney course, which is typically tangy and sweet. The chutney is usually made of m mangoes, tomatoes, anara sh pineapple, teetal tamarind, pepe papaya, or just a combination of fruits and dry fruits called mixed fruit chutney served in by batty. The chutney is also the move towards the sweeter part of the meal and acts also as a palate cleanser, similar to the practice of serving sorbet in some Western cuisines. Papo, a type of wafer, thin and flaky, is often made of al or potatoes or shagu and is a usual accompaniment to the chutneys. The last item before the sweets is doi or yogurt. It is generally of two varieties, either natural flavor and taste or mishti doi a euro sweet yogurt, typically sweetened with charred sugar. This brings about a brown color and a distinct flavor. Like the fish or sweets mishti doi is typically identified with Bengali cuisine. In a daily meal it is likely that some of the courses might get missed, for instance the shak the additional course, chutney, and papa'er. In some cases, the dessert might be missed as well. The courses overall are the same at home or at a social function. Rice, which is the staple across the meal gets replaced by luchi or luchi stuffed with dal or mashed green peas. The replacement is a relatively recent phenomenon and has been seen in practice only from about the early 20th century. Sweets occupy an important place in the diet of Bengalis and at their social ceremonies. It is an ancient custom among both Hindu and Muslim Bengalis to distribute sweets during festivities. 
the confectionery industry has flourished because of its close association with social and religious ceremonies. Competition and changing tastes have helped to create many new sweets, and today this industry has grown within the country as well as across the world. The sweets of Bengal are generally made of sweetened cottage cheese, unlike the use of koa in northern India. Flowers of different cereals and pulses are used as well. Some important sweets of Bengal are Made from sweetened, finely ground fresh chhana, Sha Endish in all its variants is among the most popular Bengali sweets. The basic Sha Endish has been considerably enhanced by the many famous confectioners of Bengal, and now several hundred different varieties exist, from the simple Kashagala to the complicated Avar Kabo, J. Alabara or Indrani. Another variant is the Karapak or hard mixture, which blends rice flour with the painter to form a shell like dough that lasts much longer. Ra Shagalya slash Rasogala, a Bengali traditional sweet, is one of the most widely consumed sweets in India. It spread to Bengal in 1868. Chana based sweets were introduced in eastern India from about the 18th century, as the process and technology involved in synthesizing Chana was introduced to the Indians by the Dutch in the 1790s. The cottage cheese Schmierkäse was also known as Dutch cheese. The earlier versions of Rasogala lacked binding capacity of the modern avatar that is well known and highly acclaimed today. This was due to the fact that the know-how involved in synthesizing such a sweet was unknown before being experimentally developed by Nobin Chandra Das and then constantly improved and further standardized by his successors. Furthermore, one must clearly understand that the chana manufactured in those days was a coarse and granular variety and had low binding capacity. It was made by citric and ascorbic acid from natural fruit extracts. This type of chana cannot be worked on to compact into any regular and firm shape for the purpose of sweet making, leave alone making rasogala. This is because of a documented technological issue. Lactic acid used to curdle milk now was introduced to India in the late 18th century by Dutch and Portuguese colonists, and it is this method that creates the fine, smooth modern chana with high binding capacity, which is now the staple raw material for Bengali confectioners. At present, Nobin Chandra Das is referred to have invented the spongy variant of Rasogala. Ladu is a very common sweet in West Bengal and Bangladesh, especially during celebrations and festivities. Ras Mala is composed of white, cream, or yellow cloured balls of chana which are dipped and soaked in sugar and mala or cottage cheese. This dessert resembles the rasgulla greatly. Though it is not a primarily Bengali sweet and originated from other places, Ras Mala is still very popular. Kamala is famous for its Rashmalai. Panchua is somewhat similar to the Ra Shagalya, except that the cottage cheese balls are fried in either ghee or oil until golden or deep brown before being put in syrup. There are similar tasting, but differently shaped versions of the Panchua e.g. Lang Cha or Leti Kani. Interestingly, the latter was created in honor of Countess Charlotte Canning by Pim Nag, a sweet maker in Kolkata. Panchua is similar to Gulab Jamun, and could be called a Bengali variant of that dish. Chamshaem goes back about 150 years. The modern version of this oval shaped sweet is reddish brown in color and has a denser texture than the Ra Shagalya. It can also be preserved longer. Granules of mo or dried milk can also be sprinkled over it. In both Bangladesh and West Bengal, the tradition of making different kinds of pan-fried, steamed or boiled sweets, 
lovingly known as Pith or the Pitha, still flourishes. These symbolize the coming of winter, and the arrival of a season where rich food can be included in the otherwise mild diet of the Bengalis. The richness lies in the creamy silkiness of the milk which is mixed often with molasses, or jaggery made of either date palm or sugarcane, and sometimes sugar. They are mostly divided into different categories based on the way they are created. Generally rice flour goes into making the pith. They are usually fried or steamed. The most common forms of these cakes include bapa pia pound ha, pakan pitha, and puli pitha, among others. The other common pithas are chandra puli, gokul, patti shapta, chitai pia pound ha, aski pith, mugar puli, and dud puli. The patti shapta variety is basically a thin layered rice flour crepes with a milk custard cream filling similar to the hoppers or apams of South India, or the French crepes. In urban areas of Bangladesh and West Bengal most houses hold pitha festivals sometime during the winter months. The celebration of the Pia Poundha as a traditional sweet is the time for the winter harvest festival in rural Bangladesh and West Bengal. The harvest is known as Nobano a Euro and calls for not only rare luxuries celebrating food and sweets but also other popular and festive cultural activities like public dramas at night and open-air dance performances. Several varieties of yogurts such as Misha Pound I Doi, custards and rice pudding are also popular in West Bengal. Shahendish, Chhanar Jalapi, Kalo Jam Darbish, Ragabshai, Payish, Bundaya, Nalangur Shahendish, Shor Beja, Lang Cha, Babarsa, Ribhog, and a variety of others are examples of sweets in Bengali cuisine. Muai is made by heating sand in a pot, and then throwing in grains of rice. The rice may have been washed by brine to provide seasoning. The rice puffs up and is separated from the sand by a strainer. Muai is very popular and is used in a wide variety of secular and religious occasions, or even just consumed plain. Mori is also often used as a replacement for or in combination with regular rice. A variant of muai is koi, which is popped rice. Both varieties are used to make many different snack foods. One of the most popular and iconic snack foods of Bengal, yaho literally means hot or spicy. Yaho muai is puffed rice with spices, vegetables, and raw mustard oil. Depending on what is added, there are many kinds of yaho muai but the most common is a bharta made of chopped shallot. Jira roasted ground cumin, bitnoon black salt longa slash morich chilies, mustard oil, don pata, and muddy. A moa is made by taking mori with gur as a binder and forming it into a ball, made all over Bengal. Another popular kind of moa is joinagarar moa, a moya particularly made in Jainagar, South 24 Parganas district. West Bengal which uses koi and nolangar as binder. Nolangar is fresh jaggery made from the sap of date palm. Moas are made specially during winter. Chiri e beja is made up of flattened rice fried in sand and then strained in metal strainers, not tea strainer. It is mostly consumed with fried peanuts, yahuri beja and fried curry leaves. Though the culture of having several types of rolls are not authentic Bengali cuisine but it has a partial awadi touch made in Bengali style. Usually common within office goers, student. Predominantly non vague, it is prepared by lacha paratha wrapped with egg or stuffed with chicken, chicken tikka, mutton keema, and so on, sometimes with painter and onion on demand. This is good. Kochurai has its advent from the time immemorial. 
It is pulses stuffed in puri or luchi and paired with alar dam or collar dal is always very famous within Bengalis. Also known as Golgapa within North India, Kolkata Fuchka has its own flavor and taste. It is a very good appetizer where each small Golgapa is stuffed with potato smash and tamarind. Usage of beja masala or fried spices powder and chili makes it goes mouth-watering. Though the beginnings of Hakka Chinese food in India can be traced to innovators like O Chu and Po Chong in the old city, it is in Tangra, a neighborhood 30 kilometers away from Kolkata, that the cuisine took true shape. Tangra, which means tannery in Bengali, was home to Chinese leather factories, which were shut down after the Indo-Sino War in 1962. After India granted asylum to the Dalai Lama in 1959, relations between India and China began to weaken. In 1962, China invaded India through Ladakh in the north, which spiraled into a disastrous war between the two countries. India lost many soldiers to the war, and in response began to imprison the Chinese immigrants in detention camps in Rajasthan. After the war, hostilities between the Indian and Chinese communities began to grow leaving Chinese businesses in Tangra, and restaurants in the older Dharmatala area, to suffer. After the animosity caused by the war died down, however, some Chinese moved back and converted the tanneries to restaurants, and Tangra became the new center of Indian Chinese cuisine. Snacks Muai Yeho Muai Moa Chiri e Beja Rolls Kochurai Alar Dam Fuchka Bangla Academy Bangla Academy Literary Award, Ikushay Padak Ambal or Aumbal, a sour dish made either with several vegetables or fish, especially fish bones. The souring agent is usually tamarind pulp, unripe mango and sometimes amla or amloki is used. Curd, though a souring agent occasionally used with non-vegetarian dishes, will not be called ambal. It is served at the end of the meal as a kind of digestive, and to cleanse the palate, alu dum, heat oil and fry the potatoes and then add oil and fry onions and ginger garlic paste and add all other spices. When the onions get brown put the fry potatoes into it, add some water and remove the lid off till the potatoes get boiled, achar, pickles. Generally flavored with mustard oil, mustard seeds, aniseed, caraway seed, and asafoetida, or hing, bora, anything that has been mashed and then formed into rough roundish shape and fried, generally in mustard oil. Generally served with rice as a starter, or served with puffed rice crisps as a snack. The bora has quite a few different kinds. When potatoes are fried in a light chickpea flour batter, they are called fuluri, beja, anything fried, either just after it has been salted or dipped in any kind of water-based batter. Does not include croquettes, or crumb-coated items, bapa, fish or vegetables steamed with spices, bait, a vegetable, that has been put inside the pot in which rice is cooking and it has been cooked along with the rice. Generally, you get potatoes, butternut squash, raw papayas, bitter gourd, snake gourd and okra in the rice. Bengalis often eat it with a tinge of mustard oil and salt. However, a very popular one-dish Bengali meal is alu bait bot, which is potatoes boiled along with rice and then served along with the rice. For this, generally go bind a paga top rice, which is a short-grained, glutinous rice that cooks quickly, is used, and is preferred to the long-grained rice, 
because of its creamy quality, and ability to become ever so sticky, which aids the dish when it comes to mashing. During the serve, some fresh ghee or butter, and salt to taste, to be mixed and mashed by hand into the right consistency, and then eaten. A raw green chili, and a boiled and shelled egg sometimes accompanies this dish, porta, any vegetable, such as potatoes, beans, sour mangoes, papaya, pumpkins, or even dal, first boiled whole and then mashed and seasoned with red shallot, fresh chili, mustard oil slash ghee and spices, chakori, usually a vegetable dish with one or more varieties of vegetables cut into longish strips, sometimes with the stalks of leafy greens added all lightly seasoned with spices like mustard or poppy seeds and flavored with a porin. Sometimes a chach chori may have small shrimp. The skin and bones of large fish like betki or kaital can be made into a chach chori called kata chach chori. The stir-frying process and the lightness of a chak hori is not unlike that of chop suey, which is a term for assorted pieces and this shows the influence of the Chinese in Bengali household cooking. The chak hori would be generally an assortment of vegetable and fish bones and other things that would have been rather thrown away, fried in a kore, over high heat at first, and then simmered to let the vegetables cook down to being just done, and then taken off the flame immediately to stop cooking. The cooking procedure adds to the confirmation of the entrance of Chinese style of cooking into Kolkata during the mid-1800s, prior to which this particular dish was not very popular in Bengali cuisine, chop, croquettes, usually coated with crushed biscuit or breadcrumbs, cutlet, very different from the cutlets of the Brits, this is referred typically to a crumb-coated, thinly spread out dough made generally of chicken-slash-mutton minced, mixed together with shallot, bread crumbs and chilies. Generally it is then dipped in egg and coated in bread crumb, fried and served with thin julienne of cucumber, carrots, radish, and shallot. Often an egg mixed with a teaspoon or two water and a pinch of salt is dropped on top of the frying cutlet, to make it into a kabirajai the Bengali pronunciation of a coverage or cover egg cutlet, influenced by the British, chankra, a combination dish made with different vegetables, portions of fish head and fish oil, chunky, tiny pieces of one or more vegetable, generally a dice of vegetables along with general odds and ends, often even the peels a euro usually flavored with patch faron. Whole mustard seeds or kalojira. Chopped shallot and garlic can also be used, but hardly any ground spices, chutney, generally Bengal is one of the pioneers for this particular dish, making it with everything, including preserved mango sheets, called amshato, dalna, mixed vegetables or eggs, cooked in a medium-thick gravy seasoned with ground spices especially goram mushla and a touch of ghee, dom, vegetables, especially potatoes, or meat, cooked over a covered pot containing water, slowly over a low heat, slightly steaming. The word is derived from the dumb technique popular in Mughlay food, dolma slash dorma, a vegetable, potol, stuffed with fish boiled, deboned then prepared with Bengali five-spice powder, ginger, and shallot. A mixture of poppy seeds, grated coconut, raisins, or shrimp is commonly used for stuffing. During the times of the Muslim rulers, this dish came to the region with its Turkish name, with the only noticeable change being the vegetable used for stuffing, gantu. Different complementary vegetables are chopped or finely grated and cooked with both a faran and ground spices. Dried pellets of dal are often added to the gantu. Ghee is commonly added at the end. Non-vegetarian gantu s are also made, with fish or fish heads added to vegetables. 
The famous Mu Ryan Tuo is made with fish heads cooked in a fine variety of rice. Some Gantu S are very dry while others are thick and juicy, yihol, literally, hot. A great favorite in Bengali households, this is made with fish or shrimp or crab, first lightly fried and then cooked in a light sauce of ground red chili or ground mustard and a flavoring of pachfaran or kalojira. Being dryish, it is often eaten with a little bit of dal poured over the rice, yihol, a light fish or vegetable stew seasoned with ground spices, like ginger, cumin, coriander, chili, and turmeric, with pieces of fish and longitudinal slices of vegetables floating in it. The gravy is thin yet extremely flavorful. Whole green chilies are usually added at the end and green coriander leaves are used to season for extra taste. It is the closest to a curry, yet it is more of a use than a sauce, kalia, a very rich preparation of fish, meat or vegetables using a lot of oil and ghee with a sauce usually based on ground ginger and fresh shallots pasted or fried along with a tempering of goram moshla, kofta ground meat or vegetable croquettes bound together by spices or eggs served alone or in savory gravy. Koftas are usually softer than boras which are mainly made of ground lentils, sometimes with added chopped vegetables. Telabhaja is different, korma, a term that can also be called kurma, of Mughali origin, meaning meat or chicken cooked in a mild yogurt-based sauce with ghee instead of oil. Poppy seed paste is often added to it. People of southern Bangladesh are known to add coconut milk to many of their dishes and korma is no exception, kosha, meaning fried for a long time with ground and whole spices over high heat until shallot slash garlic slash ginger have dissolved into a thick paste. Usually applied to meat and some shellfish, patchery, generally oily fish is sliced evenly and then wrapped in a banana leaf, after the fish has been hit by a basting of freshly pasted mustard with a hint of mustard oil, chili, turmeric, and salt, pora, literally, burnt. Vegetables are wrapped in leaves and roasted over a wood or charcoal fire. Some Glossary The Indian Chinese Cuisine